In this video, I'm assembling a frame handle. To catch you up on things, I forged the mosaic Damascus for our 12 inch buoy blade. I also ground, heat treated, and hand sanded the blade in order to prepare it for work on the handle. I begin by using the torch to heat up the guard and forge it roughly to shape. I sketched out the guard shape on top of the anvil with a sharpie. That way as I'm forging the guard, I can follow the shape of it sketched out on top of the anvil. Once the guard is cooled, I use the milling machine to mill the flats of the guard down. I need to mill it down to about a quarter of an inch thick. I used extra thick stock to start with, so I would have plenty of wiggle room on the curved parts of the guard. Once that's done, I move on to cleaning up the curved areas of the guard on the 2x72 belt grinder. I use the grinder set up horizontally with a work rest, and then I can lay the guard on there nice and flat and know that I'm grinding everything square in those curved areas. It's now time to start cutting out the slot for the tang to go through. I use a dial indicator to accurately remove material from the sides of my slot. When I first started milling guard slots, I would rough them in and do a lot of filing in order to get the fit right. These days I find a lot of enjoyment out of getting as close as I can on the milling machine before moving over to files. Once I'm done milling the slot into the guard, I then hammer the guard onto the blade until the ricasso leaves a little bit of a mark on the face of the guard. At that point, I can start to remove metal where the ricasso hits the guard, hammer the guard on, remove more metal, hammer the guard on, remove metal until the ricasso itself is inlaid into the guard. That's how I like to get a perfect fit between my guard and ricasso. Before we do the next thing, I want to let you know about the course I made. It's called the Beginner Bladesmith. If you want to make high-end detailed knives someday, this course is a great place to start. It's currently on sale for 40% off with the coupon code MAKER. Enter that coupon code at checkout and you will definitely be good to go. If you find this course isn't right for you, then let me know within 14 days of purchase and I'll give you a full refund. Click the link in the description if you're interested in learning knife making directly from me. Once the guard is fit, I move on to the front spacer. The front spacer is made out of the same mild steel the guard is. All these pieces will get inlaid with arginium silver later on and then they'll be gun blued to have a beautiful black mirror finish. I mill the front spacer the same way I milled out the guard. The handle on this buoy is gonna be a frame handle with integral rear bolsters. So I start with a piece of steel that's about three quarters of an inch thick. That'll give me enough material to have our integral bolsters on the pommel end of the handle. Once the bar is squared up, I begin hogging off material. We need to remove about a quarter inch of material on each side of the frame handle and leave the very pommel end alone. That's where the integral bolster will be. After hogging the material off of one side with my largest cutter, I switch to a small carbide quarter inch cutter. This allows me to clean everything up and be a little bit more precise before I flip the part over. Once we're done with all that milling, we can fire up the bandsaw and start cutting out the slot for the tang. The end of our tang will be threaded and have a pommel nut that screws on from the very end of the handle, holding everything firmly in place. On the pommel end of the handle, I drill some holes for the pommel nut. The pommel nut will screw on to the threaded end of the tang and hold the entire handle assembly together. I've ground the end of the tang to 3 16 inch diameter round. 
That's the size I need for the 1032 threads that we're gonna add later. Right now, the end of the tang is very hard. So I use a torch to heat it up to about 1500 degrees and then let it air cool. That'll soften it a little bit, allowing me to cut those threads in. After the tang has cooled, I thread it with a 1032 die. We now have threads on the end of the tang with nothing to screw onto those threads. It's time to get going with the pommel nut. Most of the time I enjoy making pommel nuts, sometimes they don't go the way I want them to. This was one of those times. I think I ended up redoing the pommel nut like four times. I kept getting in a hurry and making too many mistakes that I should have completely avoided by just taking my time a little bit more. That tends to happen more when I'm making pommel nuts with materials that aren't precious. If I'm making a Damascus pommel nut, I might not have enough Damascus to make another one, so I really take my time. This one's mild steel that's gonna have inlay and gun bluing. So I have a whole long stick of the mild steel so I don't feel that pressure of having a precious amount of material and I make a lot more mistakes sometimes that way. Once I'm done cutting on the pommel nut, one of my favorite parts is polishing it with a Dremel tool and some polishing wheels. It's way faster than using sandpaper wrapped around a backer. The pommel nut's been threaded. The next thing we need to do is mill a hole in the top of the pommel nut. That'll allow me to stick a 3 seconds inch drill bit through the hole to be able to tighten and loosen the pommel nut onto the knife. The next thing on our to-do list is to make the frame handle index to the front spacer the same every time. For that, I'm gonna drill lineup pin holes and use hardened 52100 dowel pins to line up the frame and the front spacer the same every time. I use Starbond CA glue to hold the front spacer onto the frame in the correct position. To remove the CA glue, all I need to do is heat the parts up with the torch and it should burn all the CA glue off. While we're here, I can't help myself. I've got to burn some wood. I deburr the holes and clean up the parts. Make sure I get rid of any of that burnt super glue. Then we can move on to grinding the top and bottom of the Ricasso to shape. I oversized the top and bottom of the front spacer. So now we can grind it down to the proper size. I want it the same size as the Ricasso. Now we can move on to profiling the frame. It's currently just a big rectangle, but I wanna shape it into a bottleneck shaped handle. If you're wondering what the orange and green is, that's an EDM stone with a couple layers of masking tape on top of it, super glued to the frame. I did that so I could lay it flat on my work rest as I ground the profile of the handle. And that way I knew everything would be ground nice and square. Once again, I can use the torch to remove the Starbond CA glue. I spent way too much time laying out all six holes for the handle pins. I had to get the layout just right because the finished handle will have carving on the surface that's kind of a quilted pattern and I need to make sure each one of the pins comes out in the center of the pattern that's going to be on the surface. The handle scales from this buoy will be made from fossilized mammoth ivory. This happens to be interior fossilized mammoth ivory. 
so it's got a nice creamy yellow color. I prepare the handle scales by flattening them on the disc sander. It's important to get the handle scales perfectly flat so they sit nice and tightly against the frame. I cover the scale with pencil marks so I can see where the low areas are as I'm disc sanding. Once I've sanded all the pencil marks off, everything should be flat. We can then clamp the handle scales one at a time to the frame and then use the holes that are already in the frame as guide holes to drill through the mammoth ivory. The drill bit gets plugged up very easily by the mammoth ivory that it's cutting. I drill a small amount and then clean the chips off the end of the bit and then continue drilling. And yes, as I broke through the mammoth ivory, I went too far and the drill chuck hit my clamp, which made me jerk sideways and break off the bit. Once the pinholes have been drilled, we need to cut the excess material off the ends of the mammoth ivory. I then clamp the frame in the milling machine vise, making sure that the end of the frame is square to the milling machine. I then assemble the mammoth ivory scales to the frame, hold it in place with a clamp, and clean up the end of the handle with the mill. Using the mill will allow me to get everything perfectly flat on the end of the handle, so we'll have a good fit between the handle and the front spacer. And here's our handle assembled so far after cleaning the end up on the milling machine. It's time for our very first fit up after adding the mammoth ivory scales. Everything should fit up perfectly because we've taken the time to make sure everything's square and consistent on the ends of the handle. And sure enough, all that time and effort paid off because it fits up on the first try. At this point, there's only three major stages left on this knife. We have to finish shaping the guard, front spacer, and handle, and then we move on to the embellishment stage. We have to add a groove to the front spacer and do a bunch of Arginium silver inlays. The final stage is the finishing stage. We do the final hand sanding, get the blade etched, get the bluing done, and have this knife finished. I will see you in the next video. May the forge be with you. Bye-bye.